Hello everybody, it's -a me, Mario, and I'm a Luigi, and here we are with the third and final part of the top 18 food and beverage SCPs. Now yeah, from when we were when we were doing parts one and two, as you guys also could have known, most of the parts in there was uh, mentioning either Euclid or Safe. Yeah, we haven't seen a single cater yet. So I'm guessing so far everything is either safe, like 100% okay to handle, or maybe a little bit hard to deal with, which is what Euclid meant. But I'm trying to see, being that this is the third and final part, will we see a Keter level? It might be likely, because I mean, you know, you know how Tats is. He won't, he wouldn't just throw in Keter for nothing. So it would have to be in this third and final part we're doing if it wasn't in parts one and two. But I guess we'll have to see for ourselves. So let's -a go. Number three. We're almost done here. SCP-1863. Okay. Object class, Euclid. All right. SCP-1863 are two competing soft drinks sold exclusively within the town of Alabama. SCP-1863-A is a sparkling lemon-lime soft drink with hydrogen used in place of the dissolved CO2, sold as Lime Liftoff from the Citrox Corporation. Oh! SCP-1863-B is a non-caffeinated root beer and cream beverage known as Sarsaparilla Cream, sold by Carl's Caffeine Club. Okay. Neither of these organizations have any record of operating within the USA prior to the discovery of SCP-1863. Whoa! However, the Citrox Corporation reportedly operated out of the city of Luxembourg from 1982 to 1999. SCP-1863-A and SCP-1863-B are both highly addictive despite having identical composition to equivalent non-anomalous soft drinks. Both SCP-1863-A and SCP-1863-B are capable of reacting to specific phrases, mainly praises or criticisms of the specific qualities of the SCP-1863 instance, such as flavor, chemical content, and appearance. Praising the respective SCP-1863 variety while condemning the competing variety appears to dampen the addictive effect. However, criticizing SCP-1863-A or SCP-1863-B while in the presence of the respective instance can lead to various chemical reactions, such as pH fluctuations, combustion, or solidification when introduced to the human digestive tract. Oh! Both varieties of SCP-1863 are highly mutagenic, capable of drastically altering the functions of human organ systems. SCP-1863-A mutates the diaphragm, Lime lift causing off. it to act like a flotation bladder. It is capable of inflating with hydrogen gas, either from the atmosphere or from SCP-1863-A, and allows for humans who have imbibed a sufficient quantity of SCP-1863-A to float up to three meters above the ground. Failure to regularly imbibe SCP-1863-A after drinking it results in the diaphragm collapsing, leading to suffocation without mechanical assistance. And also, you will die. SCP-1863-B instead targets the respiratory and circulatory systems, and removes the necessity for respiration, allowing the human body to function without the need for oxygen, instead relying on carbonation from SCP-1863-B or carbon dioxide from the atmosphere to perform bodily functions. Sarsaparilla cream. Subjects who have drunk a sufficient quantity of SCP-1863-B are capable of indefinitely staying in environments where a human being cannot survive without a breathing apparatus such as underwater, in gas chambers, or at high altitudes without any detrimental effects. Like space! Failure to regularly drink SCP-1863-B after drinking it for the first time results in the inability for oxygen to be used in the body, and as the body cannot intake the carbon dioxide without assistance from SCP-1863-B, yeah. death inevitably results within 24 hours of last consumption of SCP-1863-B. Ow! Oh. 
Furthermore, SCP-1863-A drinkers will be highly aggressive towards individuals who have drunk SCP-1863-B at any point in their life, with the converse being true for individuals who have drunken SCP-1863-B. Okay. If an individual drinks both SCP-1863-A and SCP-1863-B yeah. within an 89-hour period, an anomalous chemical reaction will occur between the hydrogen and carbon dioxide in the two drinks causing the digestive system to inflate, and finally... It probably would not have sounded good either. Yeah! Number two! Here we go! SCP-458. Object class, safe. Oh. SCP-458 is a large-sized pizza box from Little Caesars of their hot and ready variety. It's made of simple cardboard, measures 25 inches, and weighs about 20 to 20.49 grams, depending on toppings. As a result of the unusual nature of SCP-458, measurement of weight is inconsistent. What makes SCP-458 an oddity is that, while appearing to be an ordinary pizza box, when it comes into contact with human hands, it instantly replicates within the holder's subconsciously preferred choice of pizza, down to favorite sauce, cheese, crust, and topping. It's not limited to Little Caesars brand, as pizza from all major pizza chains as well as local and even handmade pizzas have been produced. There seems to be no limit to its ability, except that it cannot make anything but pizza. Okay. Its toppings must be edible by normal human standards. The box is also rather indestructible, as all tests to destroy or dismantle a box have proven fruitless. Okay. It's assumed that the box is semi-sentient, <laughs> having at least enough telepathic or empathetic ability to sense what the holder's personal choice regarding pizza are. After constant testing showed SCP-458 seemingly infinite power to generate pizza, it has henceforth been placed inside the canteen at Site-17 for free use by personnel. After its open usage has been allowed, personnel morale has shown to have sharply increased. SCP-458 is considered safe and therefore stored in the staff canteen at Site-17, with no access restrictions required. Oh, okay then. Number one. I think this might be keto, but I'm not sure. SCP-871. Object class, Keter. Bro! SCP-871 is a collection of 237 cakes. Instances of SCP-871 vary widely in appearance and size, covering the entire range of foods described by humans as cake. Why did it have to be cake? The smallest observed instance of SCP-871 was a miniature cupcake of a mass of 15 grams. The largest yet observed was a 22 kilogram bomb cushion measuring 2 meters in length. Mm. When any instance of SCP-871 is consumed by a human or a collection of humans, it is replaced approximately 24 hours afterward with a similar cake. This cake will appear on a flat surface in the vicinity of the location where the previous instance was eaten. Okay. If any of these cakes is substantially damaged through any means other than being eaten by a human, including being eaten by a non-human animal, it will be replaced instantaneously. The mechanism by which instances of SCP-871 are replaced is currently unknown. SCP-871's danger originates in the consequences of an instance not being eaten. Any instance of SCP-871 which is not consumed will cause a new cake to be created in its vicinity after 24 hours. It looks like a cheese pizza. While this is similar to its normal replacement behavior, the original instance will continue to exhibit the same properties, replicating if damaged and continuing to replace itself every 24 hours. Oh. This behavior has been observed in all cases where more than 10% of the mass of an instance remained unconsumed. As there is no known mechanism for halting SCP-871's replication, any uncontained instances could replicate exponentially, quickly becoming unmanageable. No maintainable plans for the containment of more than 20,000 instances of SCP-871 have yet been devised. Oh. It's estimated that an uncontrolled outbreak originating with a single instance would render the Earth uninhabitable within 80 days. Whoa! 
Each reoccurrence of SCP-871 is maintained within a separate, locked concrete cell on a metal platter, permanently affixed to the surface of an immovable table. Okay. Each cell housing reoccurrence of SCP-871 is to be monitored on a 24-hour basis via controlled circuit camera with individual feeds checked every 15 minutes. Alright. Upon creating an instance of SCP-871, three Class D personnel are to be escorted by armed guards to its cell, where they are to be sealed in with the instance and induced to consume it. Okay. No more than one hour may be spent performing this task. In cases where additional motivation is needed, the termination of one of the Class Ds assigned to an instance of SCP-871 is authorized. Whoa! Upon completion of the consumption of an instance, no participants may exit its cell until both they and the room have been thoroughly searched to confirm that no portions remain. Like they weren't hiding it. The platter, table, and room are cleaned in the preparation of the next instance. Preparation of next instant? So like, even if it's, so like, even if the cake was to be consumed, it would make another one likely? I'm not sure, Mario, but that's pretty interesting. Well, anyways, guys, we hope you guys did enjoy this video. And if you did, then be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And, um, we'll see you in the, um, Sonic and Shadow React 2 versus Random Reactions. Now, the reason why me and Luigi are saying this is because you're not going to see Silver, Tails and Knuckles, Dr. Eggman, Freddy and Chico, or me and Luigi until that video comes out. As well as that one new plushie whenever he finishes his videos. Yeah, but anyways, we hope you guys enjoyed this video. So yeah, we hope you did, and we'll see you in um that that um Sonic and Shadow React 2 versus Random Reactions. See you later, everybody. Bye-bye, everybody. Wahoo!